All right, welcome everyone to another stock analysis and quarterly update on NVIDIA. Here today we have Aaron, who is a student analyst and community leader at Romero Mentoring. And this is meant to give you more insight into analyzing a stock to determine if it's overvalue, undervalue, or fairly priced. And again, have a quick summary on what recently happened after NVIDIA reported the most recent quarterly update. Uh, and, and of course, also go over Erin's uh, presentation and her own price target. So with that being said, hi, Erin, how are you? Hi, I'm super excited to be here today to talk about NVIDIA. We will be going over their most recent earnings, as well as a little bit of their new products with crypto mining. So with that being said, let's get started. All right. Th thank you. So let's go through this right here. And I see you summarize, it, summarize everything nicely on this one slide. So just give us a rundown on their most recent quarterly report. How was the results, revenue, earnings, and, and also how did the stock perform uh, on the backs of earnings? So, so get us up to speed. Yeah, so NVIDIA actually um, did really well compared to their expected earnings. So for example, the revenue, they actually reported $5.6 billion in revenue versus $5.4 billion, which was expected. Their earnings per share was actually $3.66, and their expected earnings per share was actually $3.31. It kind of goes on. They also reported their gaming revenue and also revenue from their data centers, and they all beat their expected um, earnings. And this is something super important because I personally didn't realize, like, how big NVIDIA would have gone over the past quarter. But I realized that they actually released a new product, which is their CPM, their cryptocurrency mining processors. And I think that's one of the reasons why they were able to generate such high revenue growth and beat expectations. Wow. So I've highlighted here in red. So mm -hmm. record revenue for the first three months of 2021, 5.6 billion. Am I getting that correct? Yeah. And this is from um, their website as well. So if you guys want to check it out, you can also go on their investors uh, relation page and then. Yeah, I'm, I'm going there right now to try and see if I can put it up. That's 84% increase in revenue at this level. I mean, guys, think about it. 5.6 billion. That's billion with a B. And gaming revenue was up 106%. Mm -hmm. So from an investment thesis standpoint, I, the, the way I interpret this information is that gaming is hot. Digital gaming is, is, is doing very well with people staying at home, uh, playing video games. And this is, I believe, uh, giving that validation when you're seeing that level of record revenue growth because they're selling the products, right? They're selling uh, the, the, the video cards that people need to pay to play high graphic games and data center as well. Okay. Now, What's the sentiment from the sell side? What are other analysts thinking about NVIDIA? And I see here you have Barclays, RVC, and Credit Suisse. Yeah, so those are actually the price targets from our previous um, research. So it is still the same. I think they are all still very bullish on NVIDIA, and I'm pretty sure NVIDIA already hit all those price targets. Um, after earnings, their stock went down like maybe one percentage the day after. But as we saw on Friday, they were actually up around 5%. So it hit all those price targets. And on the bottom, you can actually see that I have a second price target of seven and $10. Okay, so, so, okay, so you have your own recommendation for our portfolio, price target 610, 710 with a stop loss. Okay, okay. Now you also, uh, what about in terms of key developments or new products for the quarter? Um, any updates on that? Yeah, so I mentioned earlier how they released their own crypto mining processor. It is called the um, 30HX. So that is the first one to be released. They will also be launching the 40HX, 50, and also 90. Um, that will be in Q2. So I'm, asked, I'm super excited to see that. Um, I also read that for their second quarter expectations, it is expected to be around $6.3 uh, $6 billion, plus or minus 2%. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to see, <clears throat> read that press release. I'm trying to find it right here, what, what we're talking about this. Okay. Okay. Any, any updates to your financial model? Nope. Okay. Okay. 
this is, this is I mean, the level of growth, it's, it's mind blowing. It's, mm -hmm. it's really is mind blowing at the level that they're at 5.6 billion. It's a lot. Now, I also know that last year they made an acquisition. Uh, can, can you just give us a little bit more uh, understanding on that acquisition that they made last year, which I, I, I believe it was a hefty amount that they paid for that acquisition. So can you give us more information on that? Um, I want to do a little more research on that acquisition first, but I know they did have one. I'm not too sure if it's um, integrated well or if it's even priced in, but I'll have to get back to you on that one. Okay. Okay. It, was it on ARM? That yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was ARM. And I do remember from other interns in the program that were doing their own presentations on, on NVIDIA. Uh, my assessment at the time was that, you know, they paid a lot of money for it. Uh, the integration was going to give them access to a global market. And the chips that ARM was manufacturing is in almost, uh, I wouldn't say almost, but in a lot of the electronic devices and, uh, that's created, whether it's your phone, whether it's a laptop, whether it's a computer, whether it's a automobile, uh, a lot of the chips that are integrated in all of the electronics, it's manufactured by ARM. And ARM had a lot of licensing and patents on their processors. And having access to that market for NVIDIA it just creates a tremendous upside for them. And they will probably become the global dominant player in the chip market. Now they're rivaling Intel, okay? Mm -hmm. So I think that was the main takeaway from that mergers and acquisitions deal uh, from NVIDIA and ARM. And, and, and again, I think NVIDIA paid over, uh, over, I think it was 20 billion. I mean, we can look it up right here real quick. So yeah. NVIDIA, ARM acquisitions, NVIDIA ARM holding acquisition. Here we go. We can pull it up here on Google. Very simple search. Ha! $40 billion. Guys, think about that. 40, ah, and there it is. So was my summary on point? NVIDIA yeah. acquire ARM for $40 billion, huge transaction, creating world's premier computing company at the age of AI. There you go. So that's the story behind NVIDIA. For those of you that have been following our stock analysis series, and I gave you a framework of how do we evaluate stocks and how do we like to uh, uh, execute our process, especially in understanding all of this is number one, your situation and due diligence. Understand the story of the business. Number two, evaluate it, apply technical skills. And thirdly, formulate your own investment thesis based on your research. And Based on what I'm seeing here, here's the bigger picture. Here's the big picture. They're creating the world's premier computing company on the backs of chips and processing in the age of artificial intelligence. They're creating the entire supply chain or the supply product to drive that growth. That's interesting, huh? And kind of like a macro overview on this and kind of like a future outlook. I know that the Biden administration is also pushing on a huge emphasis on our supply chains. And also, I believe over the next five years, the U.S. senators are actually going to propose this $52 billion semiconductor funding plan. So I think this will definitely benefit NVIDIA too. $52 billion? Yeah, over the next five years. So I, I, I saw also that... Korea, yeah, I think was also investing. I think it was over oh. like five hundred, almost half a trillion, in developing yeah. their chips and plant infrastructure. Yeah, four hundred and fifty billion in their semiconductor market only, but that will be over um, nine years, so it's not like all at once. But that tells you. What does that tell you when you hear those type of numbers? The U.S. spending fifty plus billion over the next decade to develop their infrastructure in AI. Now you're seeing press releases and, and news uh, probably validated from uh, initiative coming out of the Korean government and also investors that they're going to be investing over the next decade, half a trillion dollars. What, what does that tell you, Aaron? 
yeah, I Korea, South Korea really wants to be like the major player in this market. And it already is with um, Samsung, for example. And now we know that there's a huge market for smartphones, PCs, and auto, also automobiles with these semiconductor markets. And I know there's been like a shortage. So I think the funding and the extra liquidity within this market will definitely boost it higher. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Simply put, the way I would simplify it, follow the money, guys. Follow the money. <laughs> These people are spending half a trillion dollars into this sector. Follow the money. They're not putting money into ads on TikTok. They're not pouring money into YouTube to make cat videos. They're not pouring money into alcohol drinks, right? I mean, a lot of distraction out there. They're putting money into the backbone of to, to move forward the digital age and also move forward artificial intelligence all of the money what are going to be the companies that are going to be leading and winning that space definitely nvidia is going to be one of them i think that's why they're doing that four for one stock split to make their stock more attractive and yeah i'm i'm excited about the stock and, and here's also uh some comments i think this is for the ceo let me let me, let me read this our data center business continues to expand as the world's industries Take up NVIDIA AI to process computer vision, conversational AI, natural language understanding, and recommendation systems. NVIDIA RTX has reinvented computer graphics and driving upgrades. Uh, our partners launched ever largest way to, to, for powered laptops. Yes. Zoom and the digital age and working from home, laptops. There was a shortage of laptops and computers uh, because of COVID. That whole supply chain was backed up across the sanitation. So this is the momentum. So the next decade, this is a sector that's going to do well. This is a sector where capital and infrastructure is being allocated uh, into. Mm -hmm. So this is a good one. All right. We'll make sure to add these links in the description of this video so that people can have access to it and read it themselves. Uh, the last thing I want to do here is go over their chart, right? Because the chart tells us a, a lot of important information. So this is our platform. For students in our community that are part of our investing club and they're part of our analyst essentials training program this is all of it right here okay but let's go to the chart that we've added to our platform just to give us a little bit more uh clarity on price action so nvidia oh so here's that so yeah so i see here friday's move yeah that's a nice move to the upside there's volume, but let's look at the bigger picture. Let's look at the bigger picture. Let's look at it on a monthly basis. Okay. There's multiple waste patterns and structure that I see here on NVIDIA, right? The first one started in 2016, goes up, comes down. Okay. Then another major rally again. Now just consolidating is digesting breaking all-time highs, okay, like it did back here when it broke the highs. But now it's on the back of earnings growth. There is a fundamental story that they're creating the chips and the backbone for not just the internet, but for AI. And this is a circular story that could potentially last for the next five years. But NVIDIA is just one company out of it. What are all of the other companies that are going to spread across this industry that are going to be providing the raw materials for NVIDIA? Companies that are going to be doing other products and services around AI that may have a higher growth rate than NVIDIA on the revenue and earnings level. You find those companies and you create a basket of them. And now you know what to pay attention over the next five years and your focus. You have a sector theme, you have a group of stocks, you have the growth, the margins, the earnings increase as well, and that's your playbook. That's your focus sector theme and thesis over the next three to four or five years for this decade. Um, so I, I think, Aaron, when I'm looking at NVIDIA at the chart at this level, I mean, yeah, you could definitely take a stab at it, but at 649 might be too expensive for the general market. What will be the new price on a stock split adjusted basis? Yeah, so that's uh, 649. So they're doing a four and one stock split. So 649 divided by four 
it will be around one hundred and sixty two dollars yeah. yeah so they they have a uh, four for one split coming up okay so six forty nine divided by four would give you a new price of one sixty two okay and at the current market cap level nvidia market cap right now is this is important information nvidia has wow nvidia has a market cap of 404 billion okay and if they're breaking out at all times highs post post split this 162 would look attractive and it's a company with a market cap of 404 billion app uh, this is nvidia right mm -hmm. now apple what is apple's uh market cap let's take a look so apple which is a heavyweight in the market apple is whoa man two trillion dollars market cap wow i mean folks think about that that's that's market cap that's bigger than some countries gdp two trillion dollars market cap nvidia 404 market cap um it's google it's another major company in the digital age online so google let's just put here the ticker symbol and their name now is alphabet i still can't wrap my head around uh calling them alphabet i still call them google <laughs> and what's another heavyweight? What other stock can we add here, um, Aaron? Um, oh, maybe Facebook, if that's kind of like an alpha stock in the tech. Yeah, Facebook could be one of their main clients, right? Because Facebook is backing everything with, with, with computing, their database centers. Okay, so Facebook, we could throw here Facebook, right? I'm just going to abbreviate. Facebook is a 900 and 32 billion dollar company okay so can nvidia after the four for one stock split reach one trillion dollars in revenue uh, in market cap or two trillion dollars or as big as facebook 932 uh billion what do you think aaron can they i think so um they currently have um like two Oh, sorry, 623 million shares outstanding. And if you multiply that by four, it will be around 2.4 billion shares outstanding. But I think they will be having a vote next month, early next month, and they're trying to raise that to 4 billion shares. Wow, so they so, want to make it more liquid. Yeah, they, yeah, they want to even add more they shares. They want more liquidity. Mm -hmm. And the reason perhaps why they want more liquidity is to meet the demand from global investors to accumulate shares on NVIDIA because look, this is a proven business. This is a company that has been around for, for a while. And from a risk standpoint, it perhaps may, may be a, a safe place to park your money versus real estate, versus crypto, versus fiat currency, versus bonds, versus uh, uh, art, right? When you look at the whole global pie chart of capital where can you park your money and there's only a there's a handful of asset classes and if you go into the equities market can you buy nvidia instead of just parking your money in the s p 500 or mutual fund okay and i'm just pulling up here on my end their expected revenue growth rates just to see what that looks like uh 30 billion by 2024. So I see here that 2024 revenue is expected to be $30 billion. That's revenue, 2024 estimates. On the EBITDA basis, 10.3 billion. I mean, these guys are just gonna be printing money left and right. <laughs> their earnings per share is growing. Their free cash is gonna be growing. I wonder, do they have a share buyback program? Uh, not that I know of. You know? Um, Okay, I could, let's walk people through. But this is important, folks. This is very important, all right? Let's just walk them through it real quick. And then we'll wrap up this session. So let's go to the secfiling.com. Let's type in NVIDIA. See if they have a share buyback. 
And the easiest way to track this is to look at their cash flow statement. Look at their annual. Let's pull up here, uh, consolidated. Here we go. Mm, here we, okay, so this is their statement of cash flow. Okay, how do you know that? There it is, cash flow statement, right there. Big bold letters, titles, for those of you that can't read that. Um, in terms of cash from financing activities, this is a section that tells you how they're financing their operations. Are they borrowing money? Are they issuing debt? Right? Are they paying back their, their liabilities? Always make sure you look at the financing activity section and look for repurchases. Is there any repurchases here? See here, Erin? Yeah. Related payment to repurchase of common stock. Uh, the last time they bought shares was in 2017. So they oh, stopped. 2019. Up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 2019. Thank you for that. Um, my brain is running faster than my mouth can speak sometimes. <laughs> okay, so 1.5 billion. They did not, they did not buy any shares. They didn't implement their share buyback. They probably used that money to improve their operations, to improve the business. And now, of course, to make that ginormous deal worth $40 billion. Okay, all right. Now we'll see if later with that level of cash flow that they're going to generate, if they can restart their share buyback program. All right. All right, Aaron, I think we've done our, our analysis on this stock. I look, I, I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm bullish, but again, nothing goes straight up. Nothing goes straight down. You are not going to go all in. You have to be responsible portfolio management, five, 10% of your portfolio in one name. And if you're really good, Okay, then you can add more, maybe 15 or 20% of your portfolio and also manage risk. You have to be disciplined in this game. Um, any final thoughts or comments on your end, Aaron? I'm still bullish on NVIDIA, but I will definitely take the precautions if I choose to invest in this company. But I'm very excited about the future. All right, great, great. All right, well, I hope this was insightful. I hope uh, you folks on our community and also in, in, in our YouTube channel got to learn something and play it back listen to the methodology uh read the information on the industry do your homework and come up and make your own um conclusion okay and be independent right and and, and you got to be a big boy here and, and do your own homework and research so with that being said i'll end the session here and i'll see you in the next one take care <laughs>